question I often think about now is, as Silicon Valley, are we programming apps or are we programming people? Mind control. Is that Facebook's next potential step? I mean, they seem to be getting into just about everything else. After the most recent acquisition, some people are now starting to think it's almost heading in that direction. Media right? giant Facebook is in the process of acquiring Control Labs, a neural interface startup between 500 million to a reported $1 billion. The startup is known for its software, which enables users to control computer devices with their brain. Facebook is looking for more natural, intuitive ways to work with different devices and wants to build this kind of technology at scale. That's according to the social media giant's vice president of augmented reality and virtual reality divisions, Andrew Bosworth. Insiders say this could be one of Facebook's most substantial acquisitions within the last five years. The flagship product of Control Labs is a wristband that measures neuron activity to transmit it into computer input. While the device doesn't read your mind, it decodes electrical impulses from muscle fibers. It then moves and translates them into a digital signal your device can understand. Control Labs co-founder Thomas Reardon says the goal is to explore new interactions and to exploit powers you already have. The question at Control Labs is not how do we make our devices more capable, it's how do we ourselves become more capable. Neural interfaces are the root solution to this problem. Bosworth says technology like this has the potential to open up new creative possibilities and reimagine 19th century inventions in a 21st century world. Ultimately, he believes it'll change the way we connect. Earlier this week, Michelle Greenstein brought me and brought you actually a report on the coming cashless society. And we talked about eye scans, remember, and finger scans and facial scans and how we're likely to see a future where your biometric information is linked to every transaction that you make. And we also showed you uh, 40 different countries that have already developed some sort of biometric ID grid. But while looking into this, Michelle found a story that she thinks deserves a segment of its own. This one is about microchips, but not just microchips, microchips being inserted into the bodies of human beings. So these are radio frequency identification chips or RFID. Yeah. This is the same exact technology that right now we have in most of our debit and credit cards. We also have a number of states, New York, Vermont, Michigan, that have already adopted an RFID chip program for their driver's licenses. And as more states sign on to this, they, this may become mandatory in the US. But let's talk about these chips, like you can see here, in your bodies. Look, with all technology, you have good and bad sides, right? So there's definitely potential for some good if you're differently able, if you're perhaps unable to open a door without help, then this will allow you to gain access to your home. If you go to the hospital, they will have all your medical records right there. And then of course you have the issue of lost pets. Over the past few years, we've seen these heartwarming stories of owners being reunited with their dogs. Um, this flooded the internet. Even Ohio State University said that dogs with chips are 2.5 times more likely to be returned home. So we're seeing this kind of technology being rolled out worldwide. In Spain, there are certain clubs where you can just use a microchip to skip the line. You don't mm. have to wait in line. In Sweden, there are train tickets where you can just swipe your little hand and you don't have to have a tangible train ticket. And then, of course, there's this Wisconsin-based company called Three Square Market. It's the first U.S.-based company to implant these microchips into their workers. You could use it to enter the building. Well, first of all, you know, Rick, uh, what, what we're doing right now is there was a comment that was made. This is 20 years off. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's here right now. We have a different kind of finalmente for you tonight. In case you were thinking we would finish this newscast without a mention of Halloween. Did you think that? I thought to myself, ain't gonna do it. Ain't gonna do it. Ain't gonna do something on Halloween. And then this story crossed. We have to. It's about ghost particles. And we just couldn't help ourselves. So we're going to do it for you. We're going to show you this story. Actually, we're sending out our princess of mystery and intrigue on this one. Here is RT's Natasha Sweet. It might not be the scare you're looking for on this Halloween, but intriguing nonetheless.
A mysterious particle yet to be confirmed is bringing excitement to a group of scientists out of Switzerland. Certain researchers at a physics lab near Geneva are investigating the possibility of a new unexpected ghost particle. Scientists say the unknown particle may have appeared during experiments while using the Large Hadron Collider. The machine detector has pointed out bumps in their data, and these unknown bumps are said to be more than double the mass of a carbon atom. The interesting part is some scientists believe there isn't a theory at the moment that includes this mysterious particle. George Wiegelin, a German theorist, says it's something being looked into at the moment. He says this does not exclude the possibility that such a signal could actually exist. On the contrary, it would be even more exciting if a signal were observed that does not seem to fit into our present models. While more experiments are still in the works, it's a possibility this ghost particle could be a new discovery. Senior scientists will be discussing their work publicly on Thursday about the undiscovered bumps. Scientists say if this discovery is confirmed by ATLAS, it will be considered real and possibly something completely revolutionary. Britain's fertility regulator is to look into claims that a number of doctors have been secretly allowing couples to choose their baby's gender for a fee. The practice is illegal in the UK unless it's for medical reasons. Quinta Valley, who's the founder of Comment on Reproductive Ethics, and political activist first, Kate Smirthwaite. There are medical conditions which either only affect boys or only affect girls. And it's actually fairly standard practice in lots of places around the world for couples who have a family history of those kind of conditions to be given IVF and given the opportunity to select the gender of child that is less likely to suffer from those conditions. I think we would all take steps to try and make sure that our children were less likely to have problems later in life in all sorts of different ways. The idea of just choosing the sex of your child based on a whim, I think, you know, I think to me it sounds horrifying but what we should be asking really is the question what kind of culture are we living in if people have a really strong feeling if people really really only want a boy um, should we be forcing those people to have a girl do we want a girl raised in a family that really only wants a boy and in a culture that evidently values boys much more strongly in a fertility clinics has been slammed for helping hundreds of Australian couples choose the gender of their children the procedures banned in Australia itself uh, so it was carried out in the United States instead Outrage over the latest move toward designer babies. The world's first genetically engineered babies. And you get down the slippery slope of dis genetically altered designer babies. It includes designer babies. Well, with the gene editing procedure or eugenics, clinics can alter our child's DNA. That allows them to change physical features such as eye color, even cure certain illnesses. A ban on editing human embryos is established in 19 countries around the globe. The US too has restrictive rules on research, but gender selection is not prohibited. Scientist Brian Hanley explains concerns surrounding genetic engineering. The risks are, are so high right now that, you know, that's, that's why, the, why genetic engineering has been banned for humans because in animals you get you get situations where you get say 30 embryos that are considered good enough to implant and out of those you get two or three that can survive for a few weeks and one that is considered viable we're just on the on the edge of being being ready to do that in a way that is reliable enough uh, uh, for human use Telepathy or communication without talking has always seemed more like a sixth sense, but now scientists are looking into integrating thoughts into technology. Would this allow others to know our thoughts? Well, we have to using social media. We communicate without speaking all throughout the day, but we get to choose what others hear from us. If you bring a machine into the mix without emotions, does this pose a dangerous threat? According to researchers, telepathy is the natural progression for communication. Scientists were able to use machine learning technology to convert brain signals to computer-generated speech. The technology had a 75% intelligibility rate tracking simple expected words. All signals were measured from the speech center of epileptic patients' brains who were undergoing surgery. 
and the idea isn't that far-fetched. Take Elon Musk's Neuralink. His project focuses on investigating connections between brains and machines. He says their ultimate goal is to enable humans to coexist with artificial intelligence. Everything that you perceive, feel, hear, think, it's, it's all action potentials. It's all just, it's neural spikes. Dr. Joel Kahn, a cardiologist and holistic medical doctor, says he's worked with very complex patients and sees a benefit of being able to access the latest treatments and techniques through this technology. The super doctor, I hope, doesn't have to be a robot. I hope the super doctor is a human with an enhanced brain and an enhanced telepathy so that literally, if your listeners aren't aware, the number three cause of death in the United States are medical errors drug interactions, mistaken procedures and such. Uh, we need to improve on that and, you know, better super powered healthcare professionals is literally going to be one answer in the future. Take a look at Public Library of Science Journal indicates that scientists have been able to help paralyzed people use digital devices with nothing but their thoughts. They just look at the screen and think about moving a cursor and they're able to work the device using an electrode array system called BrainGate 2. Two men and one woman, paralyzed below the neck, had electrode grids implanted over part of the motor cortex, a part of the brain that helps control movement. When they looked at a computer tablet and thought about moving a cursor, the implants actually picked up those thoughts, then sent them to a virtual mouse paired with the tablets, which actually executed what the people were thinking about. These were just store-bought tablets too, not something fancy rigged up for the lab. So the people were actually able to use the tablets using nothing but their thoughts. They were able to browse the web, compose and send email, text, play music, and more. The woman looked up information on how to take care of orchids. She also ordered groceries online. One of the male participants was excited because he could actually text his friends and be funny with them, actually conveying his sense of humor easily. The other participant called the interface simply amazing. The research represents a breakthrough in that they used store-bought, unmodified devices. This is how far we've come, that we can actually implant devices in the brain so that we can control regular computer tablets with our thoughts. Obviously, the implications for people who are paralyzed are huge, but it's also a pretty huge step for humanity in general, just another step in the growing field of neural implants. Scientists are now working on implants that can boost our memories, help manage psychiatric illnesses, and so much more. Elon Musk says he's about to announce a product from his company, Neuralink, that will make anyone superhuman capable of competing with any artificial intelligence. The melding of the human brain to computer brain is only in its infancy and is bound to keep growing.